And we're back, with some more oxygen not included, on this achievement run attempt. Uh, our next achievement is going to be hopefully getting off the ground. We want to get into this rocket and we want to actually set it up. And this rocket here, its only purpose is going to be to scan planets. We want to scan as many planets as we can per launch. So we need to stick in a telescope up here. However, there is a little bit of a minor problem here. That minor problem is radiation. There, there's, there's a lot of rads coming through. Now, on normal difficulty, this would not be as much of a problem. You, you dump 100 rads every time you use the bathroom. However, we only get rid of 33 at a time. So we're going to need to put in a few tiles here just to help us out. Uh, and we're probably still going to need to put on a bunch of anti-rad meds. So we're going to need to do that just to damp down the radiation. Yeah. Then, of course, we're going to have to put in, let's see, a telescope right about there. And then the rest of it's going to be, we needed a combination to keep the dupe sane and... Not without any morale problems or stress issues. And I don't think we don't have access to a few techs right now, so it's going to be difficult for us to make this pretty. So this is going to be rough and ready. This is just a preliminary design. We're going to put down an oxygen diffuser here and a power outlet just so we actually have some power. In fact, we'll make that a priority six. That should mean we get some oxygen in here soon enough that, you know, the dupes don't have huge problems building in here. Then we're going to put the telescope up there. Bedroom over there, and toilets over here. We don't have access to space toilets yet because they require plastic, which we don't have. So that's kind of uncomfortable for us. Yeah, wall toilets. They require 100 plastic, but we'll, we'll find plastic at some point. Uh, in the meantime, we're just going to see if we can't get the basics of an exploration module up and running. Ah, better. Oxygen. How's the gas looking? Perfect. This way they can actually stay in here a little bit longer and breed out all of their nasty carbon dioxide, which we won't really be able to do much about for now. But, you know, this is just a quick trip around a, a few planets to see if we can't find a few. What I'm trying to do here is get a great haul up. Uh, the reason being, that gives a plus six morale bonus. A bedroom will only give us plus one. A latrine will only give us plus one as well. So that'd be plus two from those. If we can get a, a great haul, that's just worth so much more than all of those. Uh, mess table descent. Why is that still a mess hall? We want a great hall, which requires mess table, no industrial machinery, minimum size 32, and decor item of plus 20. Ah, we need a decor item of plus 20. In that case, no problems. We can just go look under furniture and grab ourselves a potted plant. Actually, I see a hanging plant. A yeah, hanging plant right about there should be fine. There we go. A quick plant install and we now have a great hall. Excellent. Now, we've also got a light over there. That light should increase our speed at using the uh, the telescope, and it should also increase our speed at rocket piloting. I'm pretty sure it's that tile there. Yeah, we'll find out when someone gets on it. Uh, at the same point, we do want to go out on the stair map. I'm thinking we go right here and we drop off a robot on this planet. Well, that's one of the rovers, and then if we can find another planet in range, we'll drop off another rover on that. Uh, anything else we can do before we say... Ah, yes, that was it. Food. We're going to require a bunch of food for our people, and berry sludge seems like our best bet here, though it is well covered in an enormous amount of food poisoning germs. That's, um, awkward. You know what? We can get rid of those food poisoning germs. There's plenty of chlorine down here to do that. So instead, we'll just stick down some food storage right about there, and we'll move all the berry sludge, it, berry sludge into the chlorine. Davis here is bringing the berry sludge over, and the moment that's in, the germs should... Yep. Yeah. Uh, nothing like a little bit of chlorine to make sure they... Oh, come on. I think we're actually just on the cusp of some CO2. Well, I maybe should have checked that beforehand. God damn it. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll put something up here as well. But we should be able to wipe all the food poisoning germs out in no time at all. Well, that just about gets rid of all the berry sludge germs. Now it's time to move them into our space capsule. Okay, we've got a fridge in here, unpowered. We're going to put all our basic rad pills in there and all our berry sludge. With both of them in there, we should have a way to resist all the rads that are coming from space and also have an infinitely preservable food. For oxygen, we're using algae, of course, and for power, we have three solar panels here on the outside that'll help keep us in power, plus a big, giant battery stuck on. When these are in space, they should give us about 60 watts apiece, I've been informed by the wiki, so they should, well, continue to last the whole way through. And now, uh, let's see, is there anything else left to do? Once we've got the food on board, I think it's time to go. Well, the food and the rad pills. We will have to pick a duplicate to... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. We're going to have to pick a dupe to go on board. The dupe we picked earlier was Tugboat. They have... Well, they're going to need astronomy to use... Well, they're going to need rocket piloting so they can actually use the rockets. And then they're going to need astronomy so that they can actually use the telescope. That... Well, we would like to get rocket piloting too. That would be nice. But it's not going to be necessary, I think, to make this work. So we should be able to just chuck them on board and be done with this. Let me just double check everything. Wait, wait. We forgot the hand sanitizer. Now... I don't know if this bug still exists, but it used to be 
when people would drop off construction materials to something, just say it's a granite outhouse, they'd drop off the granite and someone would come along and build it later. Well, what would happen here is they'd drop off the copper ore and the bleachstone to this device, and then the bleachstone would start off-gassing immediately right inside your rocket, which was really annoying. So instead what you want to do is I pressurize the capsule first up to 1.8 kilos so that the bleachstone can't off-gas, or, well, shouldn't, before I build it. That's why I always leave the hand sanitizer till last. Now, we are going to have a few CO2 problems in here, but considering how long we're going to be in space, we should be okay, probably. Damn it. A little bit got out. And there's some bleached... Uh, there's some chlorine. That means our duplicate's going to be dealing with chlorine on their trip. Uh, damn it. It's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll deal with it later. But I think our ship is just about ready to sail. We've got four rad pills. That's not enough. I thought it'd be queued up ten. All right, we're going to need a bunch more rad pills from Leonard over here. Once they're done with that, we can launch everyone on their way. Tugboat has arrived to the rocket. Uh, we are just about ready to launch. We have two tons of dirt for the outhouse. We have eight tons of algae for oxygen. We have 13 basic rad pills and 88,000 calories of berry sludge, which is about 44 cycles worth. I think, I think this should last for a while. Eh. Now, local colony lacks astronomer. Wait, no. No, 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 no. Uh, they should have astronomy. Let's see. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, they definitely have astronomy. You should... Hmm. Is that going to take a second to go away, maybe? Or maybe we have to turn it on. Hmm. You know what? Never mind. Let's just launch. Hopefully, once they're in the air, that will change. Okay, we're going to go... I think there is probably our best bet. The reason I'm choosing that direction is it kind of ticks a whole bunch of boxes for us. One, we want to drop off a, a ro robot or one of those little rovers on the planet. At the same time, that puts us one, two, three tiles away from this, which our telescope should be able to see. And then by moving one tile to the left afterwards, we should be able to scan that as well. And if either of those are planets that we want to go to, we should be able to get there and back. Well, that's the theory. So let's... Uh, Let's launch this. Is there anything we're missing? Ah, we can't launch. We have to clear the launch path. I'm going to presume that is this section here. Right. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, we'll probably have to get rid of that and possibly even that as well to make sure that it works. I'm assuming that that's going to clip the side of the steam engine. We used to use this uh, a trick with this to, uh, to scrape away neutronium, so maybe that's why it's uh, considering itself blocked at the moment. Or maybe it's too high up. Hmm. Never mind, we'll have you dug out in no time. And clear launch path is now complete. Uh, we'll actually do that there. Done. All right. Let's uh, begin the launch sequence. And why did I do that just now? No, Davis, Davis, run. Run. No. Just, just, no. No, I know you're wet. Get, no. That's not your major concern right now. Your major concern right now is to escape the boiling hot steam that is going to... <laughs> Jesus. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get back to you going outside in a minute. There we go. There we go. Everyone can just stay out of there for just a little bit because it's a little bit toasty there. Just a tad. And we don't have access to any Atmo suits just yet. So let's give it a minute. Then you can go back out and repair and build that stuff. All right, that's going to take 1.1 cycles. It's pretty slow in that rocket. It is steam-powered, but it does have better range than most. And they can use the telescope, and they get to use the little little telephone thing. Does that mean they're chatting to someone on the other end? I think they can chat to someone on the other end if there's someone there. And no, they are chatting to no one. It's just ringing, and there's no one available. We, we should sync up their schedules with someone else so they have someone to talk to, at least on their break. Well, Martinez is on break. Martinez, you going to do something? No. Oh, my God, your mate's calling you on the phone, and you're just... Yep, you're going to eat your barbecue. Okay, I get it. You want your barbecue. That is fine. Consumables. Yep, I got to make sure they can actually eat stuff. That would be, um, that would be a smart plan. My bad. Now in the colony, Tugboat is the only one allowed to use, a uh, berry sludge. Perfect. That should hopefully keep their mood up enough because, well, they have a bit of a problem. They have a normal bedroom and a normal outhouse, so they're not going to get any bonuses from those. And as well as that, they've no access to, well, all the other nice morale bonus stuff we've got on this planet, like our uh, nature reserve and such like. Well, while they're off doing their thing, we are going to start installing another ranch. We need that ranch because, well, we got to do smooth hatches. All right, well, we're waiting for this to be built. Our rocket is now in orbit around Ikion. Ik, Ik, whatever it's called. And... 
tugboat is using the telescope. Perfect. They are scanning here, so they'll go here, 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 here. We're going to be here for a little while, but that's okay. That's fine. What we can do now is we can drop down one of the rover modules. We will deploy you down here. Now we just got to figure out where we want to land. Ooh, like a flat space where we could dig down. That looks nice. Easy rocks to land on. That also looks good. Uh, a little bit high up. I don't like the gap beneath it. We want... And those are two on... Mm. Also over here looks good. Uh, let me think. I think the right-hand side is... Yeah, this one I kind of like. We'll dig diagonally down and see how far we can get before the it, before it runs out of battery power. And there we go. Rover has arrived. Now we can deconstruct this, but all it gives us is copper ore. It's not really worthwhile, but yeah, we'll deconstruct it anyway. Then we need to figure out a way. Okay, that is abyssalite. Is there a break there? No, I think we're going to go around that abyssalite then. We'll come in through here. I think this thing works underwater. Well, I hope it does. Ooh, thimble reed. Excellent. We want to dig that up, and if we could uh, get it, access to one seed of it, we don't. We just need access to the seed of it, so at that point it'll become possible to generate it in our gate. Let me think of a quick dig way to dig down so that we can still get back out of there again. Easy peasy. We'll just dig ourselves the stairs down like this. These things can hop down two tiles and hop up two tiles. And that also gives us access to some cobalt ore. Nice. Uh, once they're down there, they're going to dig up that thimble reed and that'll leave the seed on the ground. And that, at that point, we'll have discovered thimble reeds. Oh, and there's also some buddy bud seeds. I would really like those. They gave off, or is it floral germs? And those floral scents can be used to decrease the stress of our dupes, which could be very handy. Except for one dupe, which has allergies. But yeah, we'll worry about that later. And problem solved. Okay, thimble reed seed has now been discovered and is now possible to be printed by the gate. And uh, with that done... I suppose it's time to explore. Hmm, I really wish there was Drekos on this planet. There might be. Let's start digging. I'm... S yeah, there's... Um, this is probably sealed off as well. Wait, no. There's a gap here in this. Let's try going this direction. Uh, how are we going to dig down there? Very simple. What we're going to do, just dig as deep as we can. We want to explore as much of this asteroid as we possibly can before the battery on this thing dies. Battery on this lasts about 10 cycles on normal difficulty. I... Think it lasts the same on this difficulty? I have no idea. And we have now explored two tiles and we're on to the third. In fact, how is our little duplicate doing? Should we find it? Oh. Yeah, we should have changed some consumables under here, not just to include berry sludge, but uh, we should probably include rad pills. Yeah, talk about. Go, go grab yourself a rad pill, buddy. Come on. Yeah. That should help out. What are you up to? 40 rads. Okay, this is perfect. Once they dose themselves with that, using basic rad pill. Right, finally done. Basic rad pill, minus 100 rads. Yeah, perfect. It's going down. They will be grand in no time at all. Uh, in here, we are still slowly digging down, and they can work underwater. I was worried about that for a minute, but worst case scenario, we could just build ladders across. They can still build ladders. Oh, and back home. We are building a smooth hatch ranch over here. So, yeah, we're going to fill this place with copper ore. We're going to feed these things Ooh, happy and groomed and already fed. And soon you'll be producing more smooth hatch eggs. Excellent. This will help us knock out another achievement. Or add it, actually. Should probably send back the last of the copper ore. I think this place is pretty much done. So, copper ore? Yeah, let's just... Have them bring all the copper ore back when they're not busy cooking or doing something else. The reason I stopped sending copper ore back from this place is they were down to 17 tons. We sent back about 40 to 50 tons of copper ore from this planet, and I was thinking we should leave some, because we might build something here. But I'm thinking instead, we might just strip mine every planet we come across, and then, you know, send all the stuff back to our main planet, and use our main planet uh, for pretty much everything. Eh, we'll find out. Anyway... Itch icky on. Oh, yes, it's a swamp planet, so it's icky. I get it now. I get it. Ooh. Ooh, we can go down really deep here. There's no abyssalite. Well, there's some abyssalite there, but we'll probably have to scout around both left and right. The deeper we can get, the better. The more we can find out about the planet, the easier they'll make colonization later. Or exploitation. Ooh, what metals have they got? Looking around, we have cobalt, gold amalgam, and wolframite. The gold amalgam I would really like to get my hands on. That will give us a uh, an overheat increase, meaning an extra plus 50 degrees. So right now, let's say the best metals we have, excluding steel, 
like aluminum ore will overheat at 75 C. If we could make those same gas pumps out of gold, that would put us up to 125. Oh, that would be kind of useful. This place is already getting up a little bit toasty. We may have to replace those shortly, but yeah, that, that's multitasking. No, let's dig down a little bit deeper. Let's just see how far this uh, rabbit hole goes. Oh, one thing I never pointed out, I really should. We can't dig abyssalite with this thing. Yeah, can't dig abyssalite. It also can't dig out uh, obsidian or diamond or anything like that. So you're kind of stuck with uh, something that can only dig the very basics. I think it can dig out granite, can it? Yeah. Oh, no, still can't dig out granite either. So you're left with a very, uh, not very great... Oh, new planetoid detected. One second. Yeah, discovered a new planetoid. Research complete. Oh, and colony achievements. What did we get under the colony achievements section? Uh, no idea. They got better. Cure a, a sick duplicant of disease. Ah, I think we made a, an anti-food poisoning thing. And did we find a new planet? No, we did not. Oh, I must have been talking about... Uh, Heferato. Hmm, never mind. Let's keep going. Before we go any further, I've realized I'm sort of letting all the oxygen out of here. We're going to stick down a quick manual airlock up there. Uh, I'm pretty sure that thing can build it. Well, once it finishes hopping its way ridiculously up like that. It's sort of funny to see a thing with tiny little legs like that jumping so high. Hmm. It still does look cool. They got the eyes just right. Ah, uh, perfect. Once it's started doing that, we can start digging down even further. Ooh. We should be able to get it Fair bit of exploration on. We can't really go. But I, hmm, we're not going to go to the right. We're going to go to the left, I think. I was going to try and circle back this direction, but judging by how that abyssalite's looking, we're not going to get very far. Plus, well, essentially, there's more stuff available. Ooh, there's a natural gas geyser as well. Ooh, a new planetoid detected. Okay, let's hope it's a good one. It was a good one, and we've got Blum Blumal. Blumul. Uh, we got natural gas, carbon dioxide, cool steam vent, miner, chlorine, oil reservoir. Yes, 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 oily biome. Yes, yes to the oily biome. Do they have, okay, they've got shovels as well. Barren, jungle, okay, okay, yep, yep, time to move the rocket. Time to move the rocket. Uh, you can get to there, can't you? If we say change your course to there, that'll bring you to trip distance, two to eight. Hmm. Eight tiles remaining, so one, two... Three, four, five, six. Yeah, you can get back home easy peasy. But we're going to send them straight over there and drop a rover down on that planet as well so we can continue the exploration. Uh, and here, well, we haven't found anything too crazy, but I have been checking the star map on this one a while back. You can see that they've got a gold volcano, cobalt volcano, copper, iron, and they also have metallic caves. Caves of metal ore. So I'm wondering if they might have some of the planets I've been to. They've had uh, volcanoes, but the volcanoes have been surrounded by, like, say, it's a gold volcano. It might have gold ore around it, or gold, refined gold. If we could find enough of that to make, say, a rocket platform, 800 kilos of refined metal, that could save us an awful lot of hassle. We could store it on the top of the planet, drop down one duplicate, and they could make an actual rocket silo to land someone on, instead of us having to send over a whole bunch of steel. We're kind of short on steel at the moment. Okay, that is... That should drain all of the polluted water in here, which... I thought it would be a nice little thing. Ooh, would you look at that? Plug slugs have actually shown up in the printing pod. We just discovered plug slugs on this planet. Um, yes, we'll take the plug slugs. Oh, I need to find somewhere to contain them. I don't want them getting out. Uh, over here is fine. The problem is those plug slugs will eat all of our metal ores and they're really hard to keep contained because they can crawl up walls. I say we put all of the plug slugs in there. Uh, actually, wait, what am I doing? Just put down a little storage container is all we need. Yeah, they're, they're eggs, so they're not going to be running away just yet. At the same time, we've put together an incubator for smooth hatchlings so that we can expand out this. We're not building more than one metal refinery using, or one smooth hatch rants. That we only need one, we just need to get about 10 tons of refined metal, and once they're done, well, it'll be bye-bye to all of the smooth hatchlings. There we go. Wait, did, did you deliver one or two? Perfect. We can leave those trapped in there, and they hopefully shouldn't cause us any problems. Hopefully. Now, if we go back to Ikeon... Uh, yeah, we've got rid of most of that polluted water. I just sort of want to shunt that out to one side, and then we can continue with our exploration. Ooh, look, another abyssalite break. We are going to keep digging. Let's see how, how deep we can get in this planet. Well, exploring around, we have found a gold volcano, and it's got gold around it. Unfortunately, it's also got abyssalite around it, so I don't think we can get to it, but we can do some exploring. Maybe we'll get a little bit closer and see what we can find. Uh, give me a ladder down here. I think we can go down here, maybe combine those pools of water, and then get into this section, or at least get a look at it. 
Well, good news, bad news. Good news, we found a bunch of gold. Bad news, no way to access it. It's all surrounded by abyssalite. As far as I can see, the abyssalite here is complete the whole way around. I can't see a sneaky way for us to get in and grab it. Oh well, on to the next section. We'll just dig our way through here and hopefully we can find something else. So, uh, I kind of doubt it. Uh, how's this robot looking? 124. No, oh, the battery power is doing fine. It'll, it'll last a little bit longer. And our rocket is... Oh my god, it's taking forever to get there. It's fine. It's fine. We'll be okay. Now, over here back home, we have been sort of clearing out a few areas. I mean, we might as well. We've got lots of spare labour, but we don't really have any tasks for them right now. Uh, the problem is we're sort of holding out for oil so we can get plastic, and oh my god, yet yeah, there was uh, an accident there a little while ago. That accident involved me trying to replace the, the radioactive door under this with just regular tiles. I removed the door, I just forgot to put in the tiles, and our whole water system backed up, no one got to use the bathroom. Yet yeah, there was... there was... Accidents happened. Let's not point any fingers. See, it's like it never happened. And they're gonna dump all that polluted water in there where the germs won't even matter anyway. Uh, this slight slush geyser has gone dormant. This one's gonna still be fine for their 52 cycles. And this one, this one has just become active. So I'm thinking we're gonna start making uh, some storage tanks over here so we can start cranking out more refined metal. What we're gonna do is take this, dump it into the metal refinery, then after it's gone through one batch of the metal refinery, it, we will send it over here to this tank. Well, that's the theory. Why not? It saves us a bunch of effort. And how is actually this going over here? Yeah, these things are starting to get hotter. We're going to need to replace these with steel shortly. Hmm. It's just I feel like there's several things going on at once. But first, we need to drain this tank. I don't want this water interfering with anything anymore. Well, we have a lot of things happening at once. This cool slush geyser is now active. We need to dump that into reservoirs as soon as possible so it doesn't backlog up. Uh, at the same time, over on Ikeon, we've managed to dig out a huge chunk of this map and we're actually explored quite a chunk of it. But that little robot really can do its job. Yeah, we're gonna have it finish, keep going across there, and we might actually have this thing start a colony. Uh, the thing is, I'm pretty sure this thing can construct a mini pod. So we could stick a mini pod in here, get it to build a few basic amenities, then print a duplicate, and then have them run around in this base. The thing that makes me think is there's clean water right here, and we can use that clean water to get started, and there should be... was there algae? Hmm. Actually, no, there's polluted dirt. There's lots of polluted dirt, so the stress might be a problem, but there, there's, there's ways around that. Next up, we've got a rocket in orbit around this planet. This is called Blom, Blom Oil? Well, whatever. It's the one that's got oil on it and got oil reservoirs and an oil biome. So we need to drop ourselves a little robot down here as well. However, before we do that, there's a... Uh, well... There's some problems. Uh, if we check over here, you'll see this is granite. Our robot can't dig granite. This is uranium ore. I'm pretty sure we can't dig that either. In fact, it should actually tell us what type of material it is. Ah, yes. Hardness, 150. Nearly impenetrable for the uranium ore. And the granite itself is only what? Um, hardness of 80, very firm. So we're not digging through the uranium. That leaves the sedimentary rock, which is very soft. So the only thing we can dig through is the sedimentary rock, meaning if we drop the robot here, we could not dig the uranium ore or the granite, meaning we could dig that a little bit, but we get stuck. There's there's no way through that crust on that side. However, I think I found us a place. Where was it? Over here. There seems to be sedimentary rock down here. I'm thinking we could dig down through here, build ourselves a ladder system, and this gets us down as far as coal and hydrogen and algae. If we could land here, I'm pretty sure we could break through the crust. But everywhere else I've looked, it just seems like there's no way through, or almost. Oh, there's igneous rock there. Can we dig igneous rock? Firm. Hmm. Huh. I think we might be able to get to... Oh no, we couldn't actually get down that far. It's capped with granite. Okay, yeah. we're going to land over here, and we're going to send down our little robot. Here it comes now. Perfect. Welcome to the planet, buddy. All right. Get to deconstructing that, and I'll see if I can't figure out how we're going to get you in here. Uh, through there. Uh, through there. We'll get you to build a ladder out of that sedimentary rock. And that should get us into the planet. Oh, so much algae down there as well. This might be a settleable planet. That iron ore. Yep, yep, that is that is iron ore, all right. Oh, that's so much steel. We, we need to bring a whole bunch of that back home somehow. Um, mm, okay, first up, you should be able to actually start scanning on the telescope. Well, okay, once you're finished talking on the phone to your boo, whatever. Yeah, but they should, once they finish the telescope, we're going to send them back home. We need to refit a rocket to come out for colonization. We, we desperately need to get in here. If this place has got oil and iron, we are so moving here. This should be a fairly handy entrance. Uh, can we dig out iron? Pretty sure we can. Yep, can we dig out uranium? 
Nope, no we cannot. Well, okay, kind of knew that was going to be a problem. But this gets us in here. Drekos! There's Drekos. Okay, if we can get some Drekos back, we can ranch them. Oh, that one's good. Has that one dropped an egg or is it... Oh, no, they'll do 150. We can ranch them and they will produce reed fiber, which we can use to make Atmos suits. And if we breed the glossy Dreco variant, we can breed, we can get, we can harvest them for uh, plastic. I mean, that's both plastic and reed fiber sorted. And this planet has oil on it as well. So, yeah, yeah, no, we, we want to focus on this planet almost entirely. It, Ikeon was nice and our robot's still doing their thing. But I'm thinking settling down here is, is not actually worth the effort. I would much prefer to settle on the other planet. Hmm. So, I still want to keep exploring while this robot's got power. Yeah, yeah, you, you keep doing what you're doing. I'll give you some more orders in a minute. But over here is far more important right now. First thing we're going to want to do is grab ourselves a door so we can cap the exit right there. And manual airlock. Oh, actually, no, not at a copper ore. I suppose we could use the copper ore we brought with us. While well, digging through this... Well, hello, I've realized the problem. You can't dig through bleachstone. It turns out bleachstone is a tough material. I had no idea. That's, um... How is bleachstone tougher than igneous rock? Did not know. Okay, so that would mean going through here is going to be very complicated. Plus, there doesn't seem to be a break in the abyss light here, and I kind of want to get in here. This looks like a nice temperate area. There also appears to be some water in here. We could use this to set up our base, and there appears to be an abyss light break down here. So we should probably go down this side and tunnel our way into this section. Uh, just give me a minute to lay out a plan. Well, okay, things are not going great. There's also granite down here. I just didn't twig that, so we can't dig through the granite. I'm not sure if there's any way we can get in here, which would be kind of a nice area to start our colony if we were going to, say, just teleport people in. Hmm. So, we need to find another spot to set up in. Give me a minute. Gotta give it to this little robot. It's it's pretty motivated. Um, oh, actually, yeah, I should probably... Where, where are you going, buddy? Oh, you're going back up there. Hey, yeah, yeah, you can finish that off. I really don't think we're getting in here, but at least we'll get a little bit of exploration down the bottom. There's just way too much solid granite around here. And even off this direction, ooh, there's another chunk of sandstone biome. And there's oxygen in there. Ah, uh, how do we get in there, though, is the problem. Hmm, I'd love to get in there so we could just build a little a little gate. Then our next duplicate that we can print out could spawn here and maybe do a little bit of work. And maybe even live. Though, ooh, food would be a problem, wouldn't it? I think while we're here as well, we'll cap off that natural gas geyser. We don't want to cook the place before, so we send over someone to actually colonize the place. Plus, it can come in handy, useful. Ah, come in useful later. And there's lead over there. That is, and that's a slickster. So that's an oil biome. I would really like to get my eyeballs on. That. Oh, and there's more crude oil down here. This looks much more promising. Ah, problem is getting down there is the issue, especially with this little robot. We'll need to send people over no matter what we do. Hmm. Yeah, let's do a little bit more exploration. Maybe we can find a gap somewhere and uh, exploit something. While our robot finishes this off, I think our ship has finally... Yeah, our ship has completed the area, so it's done all of the scanning in the local, local vicinity. We could move them one tile further to maybe grab that one, but I'm thinking this is going to be our priority. We need to bring the rocket back home, and we need to refit it. We need to refit it for actual colonization, and we need to bring over multiple people and some way of supporting them, and enough food, and... Yeah, it, it, it's going to take a whole rejig, but I'm thinking we might be able to make a rocket landing pad if we're willing to, say, send a duplicate to a gate here. Now, I'm not saying the duplicate would have a nice time. I'm not even saying they'd live very long. I'm just saying they might be able to get us up enough refined metal, 800 kilos of the stuff, to make a rocket platform. And if they could make a rocket platform, that means we could just land on the planet and wouldn't have to worry about, well, putting down all these sort of drop pod things. That might be doable. Ethical, possibly no. But doable? Uh. The plan, blazingly simple. We're going to chop this area open and we're going to put in a few basics that might help us get a duplicate to live here just long enough. Uh, we're going to put down an oxygen diffuser. And we're going to put down, where is it? Ah, a manual generator. Perfect. Then we'll just put down, say, a little bit of a power wire between the two of those. And I'm hoping that the robot can build those. Now, if they can, then all we need to do is spawn in a duplicate, they can run on the manual generator, and hopefully this will generate enough oxygen in a short enough period of time that they can survive. Um, theory. Okay, and power-wise, I don't know if this thing can build a jumbo battery. We need more metal ore. You know what? We can definitely mine out more ore. There's plenty more of that stuff around the place. So we'll mine some of that out as well while we're at it. That should give us the uh, necessary iron we need. Then back here on Ikeon, 
we've got this water tank and I'd like to sort of stabilize it a little bit. So we're going to take all of that stuff out. I'm going to drop all of this water down here. And that should give us a nice little water tank that we can use to, well, fill up any toilets or sinks if we print a duplicate over here, which we probably will. This place seems very survivable. We already have 36,000 calories of swamp chard heart. So sending someone here, uh, very, 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 very doable. Now, once that's done, we're going to need you to just dig that out right there. And then we'll have you do that over there just to get you out of there. Perfect. Run. Just run. Come on. That's fine. Oh, seriously. Fine. Uh, put one in there. Come on, move, 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 before the water starts to spill out. I mean, they're a good robot and all that, but they're a little bit slow. There you go. Perfect. Don't, don't stand in it. If you'd entomb yourself. Okay, beautiful. And there we go. We now have most of that water saved up. Perfect. Well, I'll let that ro little rover keep doing what it's doing. It's got about half, well, actually less than half its battery charge left. Uh, our little oil, oily duplicate here, or... Oily Rover is working hard, and our spaceship's on its way home for a refit. At the same time back here, we have made some changes. Oh, we actually have a gate activation. Let's see what we got. Oh, we get three Slickster larvas. Nah, nah, we don't need them. Uh, medic, medicine, and evacuation. Nope. Oh, nutrient bars. They would have been handy to print on one of those, uh... Hmm, actually... You know what? We printed that. If we go back to the oil asteroid and actually print out the gate now, that might be an idea. If we could throw down a... Where is it? You, mini pod. You can be made out of any material. Igneous rock is just fine. We are going to throw you right there and we're going to make you a priority six. Now, I think what... Oh, does it require duplicate activation? Damn it. I'm thinking now, I think this requires duplicate activation. Otherwise, you could, well, do some... Request a duplicate to activate this building. Uh, yeah... Nick. Yeah, I don't think anyone can get here. Ah, damn it. That would have been nice, because otherwise we could print a duplicate and do... Well, no. Okay, I suppose that would have been slightly unethical. Oh, well, looks like we're going to have to... Uh, well, we could prepare at least a base for them. We'll make it probably a little bit better than this uh, current one's turning out to be, but we can definitely prepare a base for our duplicates. I, I think in this instance we'll just take the nutrient bars. Yeah, there's there's no point taking anything else. We're not even going to spend those, to be honest. But uh, over here... We are taking all the polluted water that comes out. That gets shunt shunted into these two tanks. This stuff is like minus eight to, well, it comes out at minus 10. It's about minus eight by it passes through this area. It's a little bit warm here, but we're gonna let the chill escape. And over here, you notice this thing is full of chilly water. So we can go, give me steel. Give me steel forever and ever and ever. And then what'll happen is, Zap here will give it a bit of a go. And then once, actually, I wanted to queue up some research for them as well. We're slowly but surely grinding out all the research that requires rads. Namely because we can. In fact, I think the next one there is going to be solid controls. So Zap is going to finish that off there. And if we check, that water is coming out at 48.7. And that's for steel. So that's the hottest the, water, the output water will ever get. Which is fine by me. That will get shunted all the way across here. It's not even insulated. I'm not that worried about that dripping off a bit of heat because some of, once we're not doing steel, that'll be much chillier materials coming out. And that'll get dropped down here. In fact, you know what? Give me one copper ore. We'll do one copper ore just to show you what it looks like. Copper ore should come out an awful lot chillier. Brendan there is just about to finish off our first batch of copper ore refined using the water, and that stuff's going to come out at... Wait. How is that coming out at 49C as well? Is copper really that intensive? Uh, copper is... Oh, wait, no, that was... He did iron that last time. He's, he's doing copper now. Don't worry, the copper will be completely different, I swear. There we go. 17.8C. So the copper was much cooler. So we're not too worried about that spreading too much hot or cold around your base, namely because most of the ones that have come out of here will, will run out of steel pretty quickly, but we're still going to need to refine copper and a bunch of others. Uh, for now, we'll go iron to iron ore forever and iron to steel forever, just to knock those out. And we'll put some copper ore in here. Now, I've been thinking about how we set up on this colony over here, Bloom Oil. The, the problem is putting down the rocket pad. You see, to get down a rocket pad, normally what you do is you send over two drop pod ships with containing two duplicates. The two duplicates hop out, they deconstruct the ships they came down in, and then they use those two ships to produce the actual rocket platform. Um, yeah, but that requires a lot of steel and a bunch of effort on our part. So I'm thinking, just thinking, I haven't actually tested this now, I'll have to do some testing on the side. But what if we were to use some of these data banks we've got stored up? We've gotten these data banks from uh, examining buildings and things like that. We've inspected a whole bunch of them and we've got 44 of them in storage. So we could knock out some of the research higher up here, like we could knock out 
uh, re uh, re research reactors. However, no, that's, that's way too much effort. Uh, we couldn't even use them if we wanted to. But I was thinking, what if we knocked out interplanetary launchers? We could knock out interplanetary launchers because it only costs 30 of the data analysis thingies in the, out of the 40 we've got or so. And then we could build an interplanetary launcher on our home planet and launch over the necessary materials to build a rocket pla uh, rocket launcher on the other side or a rocket landing pad. So then when our first duplicate lands down here, they could just simply build the rocket pad out of the resources that we'd already fired over. Hmm. But that, that will be for the next episode. For now, I've run out of time. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.